Satan appears as an angel of light, friends. I want to remind you of this. Not red horns, not a pitchfork with red horns, not a lizard man, not half beast, half man, but an angel of light, a covering cherub in the direct immediate presence of God is the fallen being that you and I are doing battle with, okay? That you and I are doing battle with. I want to set this, when we, when we talk about unclean spirits, friends, as we're going to see from our opening passages this morning, this is what we're ultimately dealing with. This is what we're ultimately dealing with, friends. Unclean spirits in Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10 is the first time the phrase unclean spirits appears, appears in the New Testament, friends. The first, first place it appears in the New Testament, unclean spirits. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1. If you would join me there in Matthew chapter 10 and in verse 1. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1 this morning, unclean spirits. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples... His 12 disciples, friends, this morning, stick with me till the end. There's a blessing here for you. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Friends, we're going to begin this morning right here in Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1. Rainbow Grits, good morning to you, friend. God bless you. God bless you. So happy you're here this morning. God bless you. And when he had called unto him all his 12 friends, he gave them power over what, beloved? He gave them power. Power against what? Unclean spirits to cast them out. Please remember this. He's given his 12 apostles power against unclean spirits to cast them out. Now, friends, what we first question we should ask ourselves this morning, what are unclean spirits? What are unclean spirits? Brother Don, good morning to you this morning. <laughs> Lovely Lynn, good to see you this morning. What are unclean spirits, friends? Now, a lot of times within Christianity, there's speculation. Uh, we begin to make up all type of names, all type of attributes, all type of, we just, you know, <laughs> we take license and freedom sometimes to make a lot of assumptions about what an unclean spirit is and what's going on in the supernatural world around us that we cannot see. And we don't want to speculate, friends. We don't want to guess and assume. We want to do like we always do. We want to let the Bible, let the Bible tell us what unclean spirits are. Amen. I see some good answers in the, in the chat already. Let's go to <clears throat> the book of Luke. The book of Luke, chapter 9, and verse 42. Our focus this morning... Is going to be on the boy, the demon-possessed boy, or the, the father who had the unclean spirit possessing his son. That is going to be the focal point of our study this morning. But we're going to begin in Luke chapter 9, verse 42, as we begin to answer the question, what is an unclean spirit from the Bible? What does the Bible tell us? Thank you for double tapping that screen. Thank you for sharing the live this morning. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for double this. Thank you. <laughs> want to get this truth out to as many people as we can this morning. Amen. And your likes and your shares gets that done, accomplishes that. In Luke chapter 9, verse 42, we read these words. And as he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. Speaking about this boy possessed. 
and Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed him and delivered him again to his father. Now, friends, who threw the young boy down? In Luke chapter 9, verse 42, who threw the young boy down? Because that here is telling us what an unclean spirit is. Who threw, what is, in Luke chapter 9, verse 42, who threw the young boy down? If you have your Bibles this morning, all right, somebody says the enemy. What does your Bible say? What does your Bible say this morning? And as he was yet coming, the who? The who threw him down. ESV says, yeah, see, I'm reading from the King James this morning. I prefer the King James for my Bible studies for this very reason. My Bible says in the King James, and as he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit. The devil, unclean spirit, connected, synonymous, interchangeable. They come together. It is together. The unclean spirit, the devil. It says, and yet when he was yet coming, the devil threw him down and Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him against his father. Again, into his father, excuse me. Go to Revelation chapter 12 now. That's Luke chapter 9, verse 42. That's Luke chapter 9, verse 42. Friends, the devil, the devil is the author, administrator, the CEO of unclean spirits. But what are they? Okay. But what are they, friends? Let's go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. Okay. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. My Bible says, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called who? The devil. Call the devil. And Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So the devil threw the young man to the floor, tore him, and Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit out of the young man. In Revelation 12, verse 4, if you go back up a few verses in the book of Revelation chapter 12, and his tail drew, speaking about Satan, the dragon, a third part of the stars of heaven, okay, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Where are Satan and his angels, friends? Revelation 12, verse 12 now. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. Now, friends, the devil has come down with his angels, knowing he had but a short time. Amen. On earth. Now, what are angels? Angelic beings, supernatural angelic beings from heaven. Amen. But if you go to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7, they also have another title, another office or operation. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 7. And the angels and of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits? Maketh his angels what? Spirits. Hmm. 
So angels are spirits per the Bible. Mm -hmm. So Satan was cast down to this earth. And when Jesus comes upon this boy, he says the devil, Luke says the devil threw him down and Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit that was in the boy. Now there's only, we're only told from the Bible that there's no, let me be clear. A lot of times Christians will make up these different uh, variations, these different species, these different kinds of demons, quote unquote. And they would take license and freedom just to make up any type of foolishness they want. Um, but we know from the Bible, Satan and his angels were cast down to this earth, bound here, and they are spirits. Mm hmm. Satan and his angels are spirits. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, and Jesus said, then shall ye say unto those on my left hand, then shall he say also unto them on my left hand, referring to the father, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. He has but a short time, friends. <clears throat> so when you and I see a person possessed of an unclean spirit in the Bible, question for the chat now, based upon what we've covered in this morning's lesson so far, what is this person possessed of and being possessed by? Who and what is this person or persons being possessed by? Based upon... Matthew 10, 1, Luke 9, 42, Revelation 12, 9, verse 4, verse 12, Hebrews 1, 7, and Matthew 25, verse 41. Demons, evil spirits, unclean spirits, the spirit devil slash fallen angels. There we go, rocking raccoon, mm-hmm, devil, spirits, uh-huh. Unclean spirits, fallen angels, amen, fallen angels, yes. Devils, fallen angels, meaning evil spirits. Squeezy, let's get it this morning. I want us all to be on the same page, friends, because a lot of times we will make up, okay, let me ask, let me ask, let me ask the chat this, because here's what's going to happen. What is a demon? Because I think many of you may still walk away confused. What is a demon? Just using the Bible, what is a demon? The word demon translated into the word, our English word demon doesn't even appear. It's, it's the original language. But based upon what we've just read and studied, what is a demon? Fallen angel. Amen. Amen. Fallen angel. Amen. 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 Spirit of a fallen angel. Yeah. Amen. Fallen angel. Amen. The same. Interchangeable. Yes. Angels are spirits. Amen. Very good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, we're in Luke chapter 9, verse 37, friends. Let's pick it up this morning. We have a lot to cover. Luke chapter 9, verse 37. And it came to pass that on the next day, when they were come down from the hill, much people met them. So this is after the Mount of Transfiguration. And behold, a man of the company cried out, saying, Master, teacher, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is mine only child. Anybody here only have one child in the chat this morning? And lo, listen, this is your inheritance, your son, your name. The father's name is caught up, is bound up in his son. His lineage is going to be cut off if all he has is a, a demon-possessed son that goes to the grave demon-possessed. That's it. He has no, his life is bound up in his son. So you can, you can imagine the desperation that is coming out of the, the heart of this father. And lo, he says, a spirit taketh him, a fallen angel, friends. And lo, a, a spirit taketh him and he suddenly crieth out and it teareth him and he foameth at the mouth again, and bruising him hardly departeth from him. 
So he was, the, 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 the fallen angel would come and terrorize the son. Would come upon him and take him. Make him, he's foaming at the mouth, bruising him hardly, and he would depart from him. And he says this in Luke chapter 9. Hmm. Hmm. And I besought thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. Now remember, Jesus gave them the power to cast out unclean spirits. The father comes to them first and not to Jesus. Jesus is on the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. And he comes to the other nine and say, hey, listen, here's my son. Can you cast out? And they couldn't do it, friends. The church couldn't do it. And Jesus answering and said, oh, faithless generation, oh, faithless and perverse generation. Do you notice those two words, friends? Faithless and perverse generation. How long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. The generation is faithless and it's perverse. Oh, friends, is our generation today faithless and perverse? And as he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, he rebuked the devil, the fallen angels out of the boy, and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. Mark chapter 9, if you would please. We're looking at the synoptic gospels this morning in regard to the healing of this demon-possessed boy. In Mark chapter 9, Mark record, records the event this way, beginning in verse 14. Mark chapter 9, beginning in verse 14 this morning. Mark chapter 9, beginning in verse 14. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them. Jesus is coming out from the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. And he comes and he sees a little crowd around his apostles, around the nine. They had failed at casting out the demon. And you can just imagine the hoopra the questioning that must have been going on in that circle, in the multitude. He saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. Mm. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. Oh, there goes the master teacher. Here comes Jesus, Yahshua. And he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? What were you just asking my disciples about? What's going on here? What, what's, what's going on? Why are you questioning me about what? And as he's speaking, friends, and one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have, he, he's, he, I'm going to tell you what's going on. I, I, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. The father's like, hey, let me, let me, here's my time. Here's my opportunity. I, don't let the religious leaders answer. Hey, let me, let me, my son. Lord, my son, and wheresoever he taketh him. Now, friends, who's in control of the boy? Is the boy in control of himself or is the fallen angel or angels in charge of him? He says, and wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. And he answereth him and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Faithless generation. Friends, I want you to imagine with me, if you will, and some of us, have uh, disabled children. Some of us have uh, children that have mental illness. Um, beyond just drug addiction. Imagine your only child being in this state, in this condition, friends. How would you feel? For those of you who have children in this condition today, how do you feel? 
is there a sense of desperation. I have a friend, a, a, a dear friend of mine, whose daughter is, uh, you know, been diagnosed with mental illness, schizophrenia, okay? Diagnosed with schizophrenia, hears voices, hears voices in and out of her mind. being taken to and fro by these spirits. Thinks the devil is her friend. Thinks she's God. A lot of times those with schizophrenia and those who have lost their minds have religious and spiritual undertones and undertones in their speech and in their thought patterns. And friends, I'm gonna be honest with you. You pray and you, and you go, man, Lord, why, why do we lack power? Why do we lack power as a church? I'm just gonna be honest. I feel like the I feel like the nine apostles sometimes. We brought him unto the your apostles and they could not cast him out. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him and fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. As soon as the fallen angels saw Jesus coming near, they took their, they knew, they, they took their last opportunity to tear and rent the child because they saw the master coming. They saw the deliverer coming. And they said, oh Lord, let's, let's, let's inflict some last moments of pain on this boy before we're cast out. And he asked his father, look at this friends, verse 21. Don't give, don't give up hope friends. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. Friends, imagine, you know, it's one thing to have a normal child who's grown up normally be diagnosed with schizophrenia or any other mental disorder. But man, imagine having a child or since childhood, this has been the condition of your son, plagued, terrorized, possessed of fallen angels. And oft times, this is, this is his upbringing, friends, his childhood. Oft times he have cast him into the fire, God have mercy, into the waters to destroy him. But thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. But if, oh, I'm going to talk to you on that in a second. I want us to realize, friends, sometimes we meet people online on this platform and other places in life, and they think that the devil is their friend. They think that Lucifer is their friend. Satanists think that Lucifer is on their, let me tell you something, friends. This was chronicled. This was written down for our learning that we may know the true spirit and nature of the, the Satan and his fallen angels. This is the true nature of the fallen angel. If they if, if fallen angels, if they have possession of you, mm, if they have possession, if they take possession of you, their desire is to do what? Throw you into fire or into water to kill you. How wicked is that, friends? Anyone, anyone ever been burned before? I got a burn on my hand right now. Burn my hand on my stove. It's not pleasant, friends. The demons, the fallen angels, when they have possession of this child since his childhood, this young boy since his childhood, they would oftentimes, not one time, friends, they would oftentimes throw him into the fire and into the water. I have a friend, I have, I, have a, I have two friends, they had a son, and when he was young, they were around a campfire, and he's trying to climb up into a chair, and the chair tipped over, and he fell backwards into an open fire. They had to graft skin and had a patch of skin back here. The parents are terrified. They drive right away to the hospital. You have to go over to another hospital to get the skin graft. Terrible experience. That happened one time. 
there's guilt in their minds, they're hurt, you know, you know, all the things that go through your mind. I wasn't watching him close enough. You know how you know what goes on in the mind. This says, oftentimes he hath cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. I want you to understand and just connect with this father. And what he was going, it wasn't one day. This is since his childhood. And now there's hope in the master, but he, he lacks faith. He says, but if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Why? Because those God had commissioned, those Jesus had commissioned to be able to have power to cast out unclean spirits, they were powerless. So now his, his faith has faltered. Now he's, oh, I don't, if you can do anything, because man, your, your, your apostles couldn't do anything. Your disciples couldn't do anything. So if you can do anything, Lord, have mercy and compassion on us. And Jesus responded in a very interesting way in verse 23. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe. If I. No, 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 no. If you. If I. I have been called for this very reason. I am Emmanuel, God with us. If thou canst believe. All things are possible to him that believeth. And the church said, Amen. It's not about if God can. Come on, let me talk to somebody this morning. It's not about if God can. It's about if you and I can believe. Friends, it's not about if God can it's about if you and I can believe, friends. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears in his eyes. Now he's recognizing how he's approaching God. He's a recognizing his unbelief. Now he, he's, he's fearful that the opportunity for his child to be healed is slipping from his grasp, slipping from him because of his unbelief. And he said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. We've got to be real with God, friends. This is how we better approach God in humility and honesty and say, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, about to be a crowd and an uproar, he rebuked the foul spirit. What type of spirit, friends? What kind of spirit was this? How, 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 is, how is Mark describing to us this spirit, this fallen angel? Foul spirit amen saying unto him thou dumb and deaf spirit mark calls it a foul spirit jesus calls it a dumb and deaf spirit i charge thee come out of him enter no more into him friends those last few words of christ are very important go to luke chapter 11 Go to Luke chapter 11, friends. Luke chapter 11 in verse 24. Jesus did not just cast out the dumb, foul, deaf spirit, unclean spirit, but he charged it that it would no longer come to him. Enter no more into him. This is, this is important, friends. Because Jesus warned us, he says, when the unclean spirit is going out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and finding none. He said, I will, he say, if I will return into my house whence I came out, that house being your mind, your body, and when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits, fallen angels, more wicked than himself. He findeth seven other fallen angels more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell therein, and the last state of the man is worse than the first. This is why I this is why I believe Jesus said, Enter no more into the boy. Perhaps the child didn't have the capacity to do what needs to be done here. 
This is a warning that God has given you and me. Many of us, you and I, have been impressed by the words of God. Mm -hmm. We've heard the gospel gladly. We read the Bible and we say amen. But some of us have not surrendered ourselves fully to the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, friends. It is not only resistance, right? Resist the devil and he shall flee. But by neglect, the soul is destroyed. So it's not only by resisting the spirit of God, right? The inverse, the flip is to resist the devil. But it's, no, it's not only by saying no to the spirit, by resisting the spirit, but also by neglect that the soul is destroyed. Many Christians today, friends, hmm, over whom Satan has control for a time, that control seems broken. We're freed for a time. We're set free from the evil spirits that held dominion over the soul. We rejoice in the love of God. But like the stony ground here is, friends, in the parable, we have not chosen to abide in his love. You ever come, you ever, you ever come out of prayer, friends? And, and then have an attitude, then be impatient. You ever come out of prayer on a Sabbath morning and go to church and be cankerous, be nasty, be short, be impolite to someone? Come right out of prayer. Come right out of, been listening to praise music on your way to church and then, get, then you got an attitude. Some sister or brother that you don't like gets under your skin. You get off your knees in prayer, and now you're snappy with your wife. You're short with your wife. Short with the children. You just came out of prayer. I would suggest to you, you get back down on your knees. And you don't get up until your heart is fully bound and surrendered in the love of God. Those who are repossessed by the enemy by fallen angels are in a worse condition than the first are those who have not surrendered themselves daily to God that Christ may dwell in the heart. And when the evil spirit returns, friends, it's worse than before you were delivered. Verse 26 says, And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead. Listen, after Jesus heals this young man, he's lying there lifeless. I can imagine the crowd is silent. Everyone's looking, eyes wide. Like, oh, Lord, he's dead. I thought he was going to heal him. He's killed him. <laughs> In so much that many said he is dead. Now everyone's, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. You can hear the crowd. He's dead. Oh, God, Jesus, Jesus killed him. Now, here's what's funny. Satan had been trying to kill the boy throughout his whole childhood, often throwing him in the fire and throwing him in the water. Jesus comes, delivers and heals him, and now everyone is saying that God don't kill the boy. Ain't this how it goes, friends? Gee, look, look, look. No people on the tiptoes looking. Oh, Lord, he's, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand. Come on. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, I'm sure with shame and embarrassment, with shame and embarrassment, discouragement in their voice and in their hearts. Pride hurt, friends. You know how embarrassing that must have been? You got this crowd, huge crowd around you. You nine have been following the master. You've been given power over unclean spirits. And you go to rebuke this fallen angel out of this boy and nothing happens. I would imagine all nine of them tried. The first, the second, the third, the f oh Lord. And with every un unanswered prayer, with every unanswered rebuke, 
that father was just being crushed in his spirit. Everyone's saying, see, look, I told you this ministry is no good. I told you the ministry of Christ is so, come on. Come on. Come on. And when they came to him privately, his disciples said, why could we not cast him out? And he said unto them, why, friends? Why could they not cast out this unclean spirit, this fallen angel out of this boy? What does Mark tell us? This kind. All right. This kind. So there, there, there's kinds, friends. There's kinds of spirits. Kinds of fallen angels. Mark chapter 9, verse 29. This kind can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. Listen, friends, there is a huge spiritual world and realm around us that we know nothing about. And we know very little. We get, a, we get, a, we get I don't know, an, an eighth of a, a court, oh my goodness, glimpse into the spiritual realm. when we're dealing with fallen angels and angels and God and God. We don't know all the different kinds, but Jesus is clear. This kind can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. Matthew chapter 17, verse 14, friends. Matthew chapter 17, verse 14. We're getting more. The Bible is repeating and enlarging, repeating and enlarging. We're getting more understanding in this one account about the spiritual realm that goes on around us. Okay. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, listen, this man would kneel down, Lord. So when all this disturbance is going on, he's asking the Pharisees, what are you, what are you asking my apostles? What's happening? The, young, the father comes forward, falls on his knees, Lord. This is how we have to approach God, friends, on our knees. This is how you and I have to approach God on our knees. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 14, friends. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 14. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son. For he is lunatic. Lunatic, friends. Matthew says the father said he's lunatic. He's crazy. He's out of his mind. He has schizophrenia. He's a maniac. He's a lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire and off into the water. And we learned from that the devil was thrown, the evil spirits were thrown, the fallen angels were throwing him into the water and the fire. And I brought him to thy, disi thy disciples and they could not cure him. And I wonder how they felt, how the church felt when he heard those words enter into their ears, into the ears of Jesus. I wonder how they looked at Jesus. Did they look away? Did they put their heads down? Were they defeated? Were they embarrassed? Oh, Lord. And I brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil. Not a devil, not some devil, definite article. He rebuked the devil. The chief of these fallen angels, their leader, their commander is behind it all. And he rebuked the devil. And he departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could we not cast him out? Now pay attention. And Jesus said to them, because of your what? Some, some of us just focus on, oh, prayer and fasting. No, 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 that's not all. Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. 
How be it this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. The boy's condition. The boy's condition. He was taken and controlled by a fallen angel, a spirit, possessed. It, have a, it was a dumb spirit, couldn't speak. Deaf spirit, couldn't hear. It was a foul spirit. He was a lunatic, friends. It's all around us today. If you go into some of these tent cities, L.A., Washington, Come on, Oregon, homeless people, mental illness everywhere, some of it drug-induced, some of it not drug-induced, and the church is nowhere to be found. We're, 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 we're at loss for deliverance. What are we to do? Is it the drugs? Is it not the drugs? Is it, is it, is it, from a, from a biblical standpoint, it's foul spirit. Foul spirits. Fallen angels have possessed these people. Now, rather the drugs have given the fallen angels entrance and permission, which I'm going to say it has. I believe a person is possessed of spirits for a time, fallen angels for a time, when they take substances that alter the mind chemistry. The brain and the mind. When you take the heroin, when you take the E, when you take the ecstasy. Mm-hmm. When you take the pills and you drink the syrup, you, you are opening yourself up to demonic possession, fallen angels to possess you. The, you. You have surrendered your will to Satan, to the devil. When you, if, that first time you willingly take the hit, that first time you willingly take the you get the syringe to your arm. That time, when you, at that moment, you surrendered your will to the devil, and now everything that comes along with that, you've agreed to. It's like a bad record deal contract. Once you sign, he says, you're mine. Thank you very much. Now, now I have the authority to make you a lunatic. I have the authority to make... I'm in charge now. I, I'll take the I'll take the wheel from here on out. You sit back, enjoy the ride. We're in charge now. And if it was not for the mercy and compassion of the Savior, Lord have mercy. Oh, for the church to have revival. Some of the conditions of, for deliverance that we see from the Bible. You, it's by the power of God, not by the power of men, that. A person is delivered in the name and in the power and character of Jesus. When we say in the name of Yahshua, when you say in the name of Jesus, what you're really saying is in the character of Christ and the power and authority of Jesus. Now, this is by the power of the Holy Ghost, friends. So remember, Satan is the counterfeit. The, the Elohim is father, son, spirit. Satan, counter, the devil counterfeits that. He wants to be God. Come on. He has his angels and then their spirits. So the Holy Spirit overcomes all other spirits. Say amen to that. The Holy Spirit casts out all other spirits, all counterfeit spirits. Not by might, not by, by power, but by my spirit, thus saith the Lord of hosts. And this kind can only come out by prayer and fasting. Now, here's the thing. Was Jesus praying and fasting? Come on, I got a question for you, chat. Was, was there any is there any indication that Jesus was praying and fasting before this event? They come off the Mount of Transfiguration, and now was everyone supposed to be in prayer and fasting? Like, I don't understand. What was, what, what? I want, to say, I want to submit to you that we should live our lives as Christians, as Christians in a state of fasting. What do I mean? We should not live in a state of gluttony. We should not be eating every hour. We should not be, some of us eat every hour. Some of us eat every half hour. 
Hmm? Some of us eat every half hour. The ideal, you, you will find scientifically that intermittent fasting is the best thing for us. Have one, two meal, have one, two meals a day. And now you're going to be in this state of fasting. And, and it does wonders to your body. Even if you have the three meals, you want to put some time between your meal times, friends. Five, five hours between meals. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you'll find yourself in this place, this state of fasting is what I'm getting to, friends. In prayer, we're praying every hour on the hour. Amen. We've all downloaded the app. And when that ringtone, when that tone goes off every hour, we're, we're, we're throwing up, a, offering up a prayer, not throwing up, but offering up a prayer to God, setting before those on our prayer list, asking for our own personal deliverance for the, the indwelling of the Holy Ghost every hour on the hour. So now we will be in a state of prayer and fasting. Put it together, friends. Brother Gordon is not giving you uh, advice and practical tips for no reason. We didn't cover, we didn't cover health for no reason. Right? So we want to be in the prayer of fasting and then, mm. Okay? Prayer and fasting. The app that I'm using on my iPhone is called Hourly Chime. Hourly Chime. And you can get any app that has an hourly reminder. Like, you know, our, remember those watch, those Casio watches back in the day? We went off every hour. So we're praying every hour on the hour, amen? And then we're in a prayer of intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting, friends. Because some of these only come out through prayer and fasting. We need faith, friends. Unbelief, you're not casting out any evil spirit, unclean spirit with unbelief. So we need faith. We need prayer. We need fasting. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the power of Jesus. We need to have it in Jesus' name, living as a Christian. And we can have victory. I want to bring something to your attention, friends. When they came down off the Mount of Transfiguration, did Jesus take all 12 disciples with him up to the mountaintop? Yes or no? He did not take all three, right? He left nine behind. And he took three in his inner circle. How do you think the other nine felt about that? Come on. How do you think the other nine felt about that? Let me read you something in Luke chapter 9, verses 46 to 48. Then there arose a reasoning among them, among the apostles, which of them should be greatest. The apostles are fighting about who should be greatest. And Jesus, perceiving the thought of their heart, took a child and set him before him and saith unto them, whosoever shall receive this child in my name receiveth me and whosoever shall receive me receiveth him that sent me. Woe unto those friends that hurt children. Woe unto those who abuse children, friends. When you abuse a child, you're abusing God. And friends, the, 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 the lake of fire if, if that soul does not repent, friend, Lord help, Lord, in the lake of fire. Love, love is too pure to cover an unconfessed sin and to allow injustice to go unpunished. I'm in Luke chapter 9, verse 48. They're arguing, the apostles are arguing. Are arguing about who's the greatest. Right be listen. Whosoever shall receive me, receive him that sent me, for he that is least among you shall the same. So when Jesus takes the three up to the Mount of Transfiguration, do you think the other nine are in a good headspace? Come on, talk to me, friends. As Jesus takes the inner circle, the, 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 you, the, you think they're mad, friends? You think they're upset? You, you, you think they're disgruntled? Jealous. They're all jealous. 
They're all jealous, friends. Probably upset. So now they're in that mindset of unset. They're not prayed up, not fasted up. They're upset about, man, is James... Are they going to be the are they going to be the top three and not us? And then this father comes along. Can you heal my son? And oh yeah, oh uh, uh, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, we yeah we, we we can do that. I want to submit to the church this morning that if you have animosity with another member in the body of Christ, man, if you don't like somebody even in this chat right now. Do you think you're going to have the power to live the victorious life? You think as you have animosity with your brothers and sisters, family members, people around you, do you think you, 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 you're going to be filled with the spirit of God if you have the spirit of bitterness, the spirit of argument, the spirit? Come on, talk to me, friends. Who are you going to deliver? What unclean spirit are you going to cast out when you yourself are being possessed by an unclean spirit? A spirit of argument, a spirit of bitterness, a spirit of anger. Think about what I'm saying to you, friends. A spirit of contention. A spirit of drama. Spirit of gossip, spirit of backbiting. When people hop in, our, hop in this live, friends, and they come in with hate and venom in their tongues. They're possessed by a spirit, friends. An unfallen angel is influencing them to speak and type those words. There's bitterness and hatred in their life, in their heart. Maybe they've been abused. Maybe, I don't know what they have going on. But friends, let it not be so with us. Let it not be named amongst us. Because there's no power. We have no power to deliver anyone if we ourselves need deliverance. In closing, as we begin to close it, I want to just touch on the role of unclean spirits at the end of the world. Go to Revelation chapter 16. I want to show you how there's this, this, this different, we get this different light on unclean spirits here at the end of the world. Revelation 16, beginning in verse 13. Um, there's no record in the Bible. Jamie, of, uh, to my knowledge, of a spirit, of a person casting a spirit out of themselves, but there's no record that says that hasn't happened either. Uh, when a person comes to Christ, I know from personal experience, without anyone laying hands on me, but just coming to Jesus in prayer and repentance, you know, anger and bitterness, they're cast out of you, so to say. Revelation 16, verse 13, and I saw three unclean spirits. What kind, of un what kind of spirits, friends? Three holy spirits? Three clean spirits? Revelation 16, verse 13, and I saw three unclean spirits. Like frogs, okay? Remember frogs with, remember the frogs with Pharaoh, okay? They worship the frogs, Right? The, 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 the magicians with the frog, right? Three unclean spirits like frogs, right? Which brings our minds back to, come on, Egypt. Brings our minds, it should bring our minds back to spiritualism, witchcraft. Amen? We, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs, John the Revelator says, come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of what? Spirits, plural. Verse 14, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles. All right, hold on now. Now we're seeing the unclean spirits not possess and hurt men, make them foam at the mouth and make them fall out. But now we're seeing unclean spirits at the end of the world performing miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth. They go forth to the political powers of the earth, the, 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 the rulers of the world. You know, I think about those of the United Nations, the, the leaders of the world. These evil spirits, these spirits of devils go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to battle to the battle of the great day of God Almighty, to lead them into opposition of Christ, to be against Christ. Amen. To be against Christ. So I want to submit to you that the dragon at the end of the world, right? Primary, pr primary application, Satan. 
Secondary application, it was Herod, pagan Rome. Third, last, final application, the dragon at the end of time will represent kings, rulers, and governors like Herod who have placed upon themselves the brand of Antichrist and go to war against God's last day people. The beast is the papacy, Vatican City being headed by the papacy. The false prophet is apostate Christianity, corrupt evangelicals. Again, the dragon at the end of the world represents kings, rulers, and governors who, like Herod, have placed upon themselves the brand of Antichrist, who go to persecute God's people, who keep the commandments of God. The beast is the papacy, friends, atop Vatican City. The false prophet, right, who come with the false Elijah's message, are evangelical Christians, Protestant Christians, who really bear, who are drinking the wine of the mother church. These are the daughters. The false prophet represent the daughters of Babylon, the mother of harlots. Now stick with me. I'm submitting to you this morning as we close that Christians are involved in spiritualism today. Did you hear what I said to you, friends? That Christians are, have the doctrines of devils. That Christians, I know it's, it's an oxymoron. Let me say, so, professed Christians. Let me say that so we don't confuse people this morning. That professed Christians, right, are being influenced by the devil, by fallen angels. Brother Gordon, what do you mean? Christians believe the soul is immortal. That's, that is the foundation for all spiritualism. Christians believe the soul is immortal with not one scripture to support it. There is nowhere in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation that says the soul is immortal or lives apart from the body. If you do not have the breath of life in the clay body, you do not have a soul. You do not have a person. And if you believe the soul is immortal, you're believing the lie that Satan told Eve. The day you eat thereof, you shall surely not die. Friends, Christians astound me that the Bible says that when you sin, you shall die. And yet we will die. And they'll say, no, you keep living. That is the doctrine of devils. That is the doctrine of devils. And I say that in all love, all sincerity, but in boldness, because I love you. There's the doctrines of devils. There are deliverance ministries from Christians who just isolate on deliverance and like separate it from the gospel. Their whole ministry is we're going to deliver demons. And they make up all these different names and all different type of demons they're casting out. And oh, there's a demon of semen. And have you seen this stuff on, 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 online, friends? Oh, there's a demon of oral sex that I, have to, that I have to cast out of your mouth. And what all this foolishness? And people, I, 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 well, listen, beloved, stop, let's stop playing games with God. Stop playing games with God, friends. Christians are caught up in witchcraft. Hollywood, friends. Some of us love our movies. We love Hollywood. Oh, we love Hollywood, friends. Suppose we're, we're serving God. We want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, but we Come on. We want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Do, do we know what Hollywood is, friends? Do we know that Hollywood is a type of wood used for a wand in witchcraft? A wand, supposedly for protection and power. A wand. So a whole industry is called... Mm. It's called Hollywood. All oh, Christians love their Harry Potter. They love Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, they love Johnny Depp, friends. All oh, Christians love to, to have Halloween parties at, at, at their churches. They love to dress up as witches on Halloween. Christians caught up in spiritualism, friends. Caught up in spirit. Dealing with unclean spirits. Celebrating. Who would have thought? Christians are celebrating the day of the dead at their churches. Oh, Christians, we love to have elves on a shelf. Elves are fallen angels, friends, in witchcraft. And we love to have elves on the shelf. We're doing elves on, God have mercy. People who claim to, to believe in God and, and, and serve Jesus are doing elf on the shelf. Oh, that's not all, friends. I'm gonna, oh, we're going to talk about it this morning. What else, friends? 
What else are we into? Come on, what else are we into? You ever seen this type of stuff? Christians, Christians, Christians are into Ouija boards. We like Ouija boards, friends. We, Christians are into Ouija boards. Ouija boards in disguise. You see this right here? This, you can go over to Amazon. You can go over to Amazon and you can buy a Holy Ghost board. You, you can buy a Holy Ghost board. That you can have direct communication with the Holy Ghost through this Ouija board. That's posing... Christians, purported Christians, we're caught up in spiritualism, friends. You know that, beloved? One in five youth pastors. What did I say? One in five youth pastors and one in seven senior pastors use porn, pornography, porn on a regular basis come on and, cur and are currently struggling that's more than 50,000 US leaders one in five youth pastors one in seven senior pastors 43% of senior pastors and youth pastors say they have struggled with pornography in the past 64% of Christian men and 15% of Christian women say they watch porn at least once a month. Let me repeat that, friends. 64% of Christian men and 15% of Christian women say they've watched porn at least once a month. Only 7% of pastors report this even the ministry at their church to even deal with this. Okay, 90% of teens and 96% of young adults are either encouraging, accepting, or neutral when they talk about porn with their friends. Spiritualism. Witchcraft. God's people are caught up in witchcraft, are caught up in spiritualism. Okay? Okay. Oh, Lord. Lord, let me, let me, let me, come on. I got, we, we got, come on. Let's, 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 we're going to cover it this morning. If you got to go, do what you got to do. We're going to, we're going to get to it this morning. Look at this, friends. Look at this, friends. This is what we're dealing with, friends. We got Christians. We got, we got young people who claim to be Christians listening to demonic rappers. Okay? Straight up worshiping the devil in their lyrics. Straight up. Yeah, listen, we're at the end of the time. We've got to, we've got to begin to think for ourselves. We've got to begin to think for ourselves. I'm not dealing with pagan holidays. I'm not dealing with all you. Listen. Listen, friends. Christians are listening to the little whoever's of the, of the world. The Sam Smiths of the world. Chris, you know who you are. You know who you are. We know who we are. We love these secular artists, musicians that hate our God. Because, friends, listen, this is how sin works. The music is melodic. The, the, the music is rhythmic. It, 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 it induces, it excites emotion. Right? It's like, it's like unclean foods. Like, you can make it taste good. It's like sex outside of marriage. It feels good. But we must reach a place in our connection with God that we mentally ascend above the feelings, right? It feels good. It sounds good, right? We must, we must live higher than that, amen? Christi Christians are dealing with demonic spirits, friends. We dr Listen, friends, let me, let me, I should find a picture for this. We, we, who, who, yesterday, who, who do we find out is naked? Who, who, who's naked? God, Christ's apostles were clothed. Jesus was clothed in his right mind. But the demoniacs were naked. Listen, Christians are running around naked online. They're possessed of demons, friends. I, I'm, not, I'm not playing with y'all this morning. We're, we're possessed of unclean spirits. 
when we're online claiming to be Christians, got all this makeup and jewelry on, got, got our breasts out, we got our shirts off as men, got a cross here leading men to sin, leading women to sin in our bodies and think that we, we are possessed with unclean... Listen, I... I Long press, not interested. I get it, friends. I'm, I know we all are in different places. I know there's, there's some that have no understanding, but we got to call a spade a spade. We got to say, listen, friends, this is what the Bible's telling us. The naked are, uh, listen, the naked are, are, are taken in an unclean spirit, friends. Because when the demoniacs were possessed, they were naked. The devil had them cutting themselves. Naked in the graveyard. Christians, evangelical, purported, supposed Christians were caught up in spiritualism. We're running around naked. We're practicing fornication. We have active lives in fornication, friends. That's what we're doing. Then we run around with the false gift of tongues. Have you seen this, friends? Where we're falling out. We're falling out on the floor. False gift of tongues. The, 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 tongues is languages. Acts chapter 2 is languages, known languages. Being slain in the spirit, laughing in the spirit. Yeah, what spirit possess of you? What spirit? The spirit of... God said, come, let us reason together. Losing Spiritualism, friends. Christians, modern day Christians are caught up in spiritualism. Modern day Christians, instead of being filled with the spirit of God, they're being filled with alcohol, with the spirit of demons. If you're drinking alcohol, friends, if you are drinking alcohol, if you're drinking alcohol, you're, being, you're dealing with the angel of light, friends. Satan is an angel of light. He appear, he's from covering cherub. If you're drinking alcohol, you're not being filled with the spirit of God. You're being filled with the spirit of, they call the alcohol what, friends? What do they call it, beloved? What do they call it, beloved? Come on. Come on, friends. What do they call it, friends? Spirits, Christians, we, we out here, oh, look, we got TV shows about Lucifer. Welcome to 2024 in America. Come on, beloved. Modern Christians are caught up in spiritualism. We are, we are inviting the possession of unclean spirits and how we dress and how we live and what we drink and what we listen to. Possessed. And what we believe, Hollywood, what we're watching, come on, friends. We're practicing Halloween, Christmas with elves on the shelf, Pirates of the Caribbean, Harry Potter. And then we're supposed to have deliverance ministries. Then, then, we, then, we, then we supposedly have deliverance ministries. you got to be kidding me. All right, look, beloved. Let me show you this, this last thing in closing. Last thing in closing, friends. I'm telling you this stuff, friends, because I love you. Last thing in closing. The modern day Christian, the supposed Christian, the professed Christian, so many say they don't keep the Ten Commandments of God. They say they, they don't keep the Ten Commandments of God. You don't have to keep the Ten Commandments of God. They either reject it or if they do keep the Ten Commandments, they changed the fourth commandment from Sabbath keeping, Friday sunset to Saturday sunset, to Sunday keeping. They reverence the Sunday. Okay? They reverence the Sunday. Now you say, Brother Gordon, so what? That's witchcraft, friends. That's witchcraft, friends. If you reject the Ten Commandments of God, that's witchcraft. If you substitute the Fourth Commandment for the Sabbath, Sabbath, Seventh Day Sabbath keeping for Sunday Sabbath keeping, that's witchcraft. That's spiritualism. That's the doctrine of devils. I say, Brother Gordon, what are you saying? That sounds so. All right. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23 in closing. Our last scripture this morning. 1 Samuel chapter 15. In verse 23. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. I'm submitting to the 
as we talk about unclean spirits this morning, if you are rejecting the Ten Commandments of God, it's an unclean spirit. If you are substituting, changing the Ten Commandments of God, that is, un that is the devil giving you that doctrine. That is the devil impressing your mind with that. And I'm going to show you from the scriptures that this is witchcraft. 1 Samuel 15, verse 23. God said, if you love, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, verse 15. For rebellion is as the sin of what? What does your Bible say? For rebellion. For rebellion is as the sin of? Who rebelled? Who was the first rebel? Who was the first rebel? Who is the devil and his fallen angels? When a person is possessed of an unclean spirit, they're possessed of an unclean fallen angel, which he called the devil. Come on. Which is a spirit, which is a spirit. Jesus rebuked the devil out of the young boy. The G Satan was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. He rebelled. He rebelled against the authority and kingdom of God, the law of heaven. The Ten Commandments are the foundation of God's throne, friends. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. 1 Samuel 15, verse 23. God help us this morning. Let me pray with you, friends. Mm. Gracious, kind, loving, merciful, heavenly Father. You have given us the power over unclean spirits. You desire, you came to set us free from all forms of spiritualism. From witchcraft, entertainment, Hollywood, secular music, alcohol, immodesty, fornication, drugs, alcohol, pride, rebellion, lawlessness, iniquity. This is all the work of the devil and the spirit of the devil. Your desire is for us to have the Holy Ghost dwelling inside of us and that we might live the sanctified life. And I pray this morning, Lord, you would free my brothers and my sisters from pornography, from alcohol and tobacco, from immodesty, from intemperance, from gluttony, from the cares of this life, from anger and bitterness, resentment, from spirits of argument and contention. Lord, these are all the works of the devil, the spirits of demons. And Lord, we want to be filled with the Holy Ghost and bear the fruit of the spirit, to have joy, love, peace, Lord, humility, kindness, tenderness, meekness, lowliness, gentleness, Lord, forgive us for our unbelief. But this morning we claim it by faith and we believe in the power of your ability to deliver us from the possession of unclean spirits this morning. Lord, please give us the new hearts that you promised us. Not by our power, not by our might, but as we believe, Lord, so be it unto us. And we ask and pray these things this morning in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Beloved, tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, go stand and preach live, friends. We'll be back to take your questions.